Hello, I'm Timothy Scott, the author of America Fool, the truth about antidepressants, antipsychotics, and how we've been deceived. Today, one in ten Americans is taking an antidepressant drug, a figure that has nearly doubled in less than a decade. And yet very few of these Americans have ever heard of what some of the long-term health consequences can be from taking these drugs. Consequences like liver damage and even liver failure, diabetes, a movement disorder known as tardive dyskinesia that is permanent and irreversible, and there are a host of other health consequences from taking antidepressant drugs. Amazingly, surveys of physicians' knowledge, surveys done by physicians of physicians published in good medical journals have found that very few physicians know these facts as well. I want you to know more about the subject. Let me share seven basic facts. Number one, the chemical imbalance theory of depression simply says that if serotonin levels are not high enough, depression will occur. You need higher levels of serotonin and that will bring down depression. And therefore, the antidepressants that are commonly prescribed today are designed to raise serotonin levels. Here's the fact you need to know. Among young people, serotonin levels are already very high. As we age, serotonin levels drop. It's just like melatonin. Melatonin levels are very high in babies and young people, but as we age, melatonin drops. If the theory were true, all old people would be depressed, and no young people would be. When the facts don't match the theory, you don't throw out the facts. You adjust or discard the theory. Number two, the chemical imbalance theory also says that high levels of dopamine causes mental instability, things like schizophrenia. And yet, we know that old people also have low levels of dopamine. Young people have higher levels of dopamine. If the theory were true, there would be no mental instability among old people, but it would be rampant among young people. When the theory does not match the facts, do not discard the facts. Adjust or discard the theory. Number three, an amazing fact. You realize that simply eating will raise dopamine levels. We can measure dopamine levels quite easily. And we know that there are a number of things you can do to raise dopamine. Eating is one. A back massage will even raise dopamine levels. And yet, eating a large meal does not lead to more mental instability. The theory and the facts don't match. Number four. In 1994, 20,000 children were diagnosed with bipolar disorder. In 2003, 800,000 children were diagnosed with bipolar disorder. Why did we have such a dramatic increase in just those few years, from 20,000 to 800,000? Well, because it's been a number of years, we have historical perspective. We can look back and we know what happened. The pharmaceutical industry, the companies that made the drugs that treat bipolar disorder, paid large sums of money to academic psychiatrists to make presentations at conferences, to publish articles arguing that bipolar is underdiagnosed, and so they encouraged it to be seen more, and it was, and drug sales rose. Number five, the United States is only 5% of the world's population, and yet our children receive the majority of the world's psychotropic drugs. We received over 80% of Ritalin. Why is it American children that are so much more likely to need these drugs? Why is it American children that are far more likely to need an antidepressant? Do you realize a 10 to 14 year old in our country is 37 times more likely to receive an antidepressant than a 10 to 14 year old in Great Britain? And 39 times more likely to receive that drug than a 10 to 14 year old in Denmark? Number six, the PI, the package insert that comes with antidepressant drugs, has information you need to note. For example, if you look at Prozac, it says after only five to six weeks on Prozac, 10% of the subjects developed tremors. For those taking Zoloft, look at the package insert. After six to eight weeks on Zoloft, 11% of the subjects developed tremors. And we find the same principle is true for all the other antidepressants. Why is this occurring? And the answer is these drugs do hit the brain in a hard way. The problem is not weeks or even months of use. The real problem comes in if someone is on these drugs for years. That is why we see the development of tardive dyskinesia, a permanent movement disorder that I mentioned earlier. People need to know these facts. 
and not many do. Number seven, the last fact I want to share, we keep finding more and more health problems associated with psychotropic drug use. You would think that these problems would be known before the first drug ever is released to the public, but they are not. In fact, the drug studies leading to their approval are very short. Most people assume they're multi-year studies. They are not. Among the 47 studies leading to the approval of our first six SSRI antidepressants, the longest of those studies was eight weeks. And because of this, the FDA requires what we call phase four studies to be completed. In other words, after the drug is released to the public and millions of people very often begin taking the drug, the drug companies are responsible for doing surveys and finding out what problems are developing. So they're supposed to make a report to the FDA at six months and one year and two years and three years and so forth. A recent study by the FDA found that 71% of the phase four studies have never even been done. The FDA says they do not have the funds to enforce the law. Consequently, there are health problems associated with these drugs that often do not crop up or not aware of until years after the drug have been on the market. We can do better.